Welcome to Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers that are in front of you. Now, I am so happy, as always, we are here again this week. And uh, you know me, I love talking about the brain. I love talking about science and what is not necessarily explainable. And today we're going to be talking about decoding your dreams. What do your dreams mean? Now, that's the question. Does everyone dream? Does everyone have experiences and nightmares? What does it mean if a dream comes true? Every person on the place of, on the face of this planet needs sleep. And during this natural biological process, sleep has a way to renew you in such a way that you don't even necessarily know. And we're going to actually talk about that specifically today. And often when people are dreaming, they're left with unanswered questions about what happens in their dream. Has that ever happened to you? Have you had a dream and you've never known exactly what it means or what you should even do with the information? Well, you're going to find out today. And sometimes these dreams come when a person is actually wide awake. Many people wonder what their dreams mean. So today, I, Olympia LaPointe, am going to explain the science behind dreams, how people can decode them, and the message they are attempting to communicate with you when you experience them. All right. Uh, I, uh, I've, I've always had dreams. And um, it's something in which I'm going to share a little bit about uh, with you. Um, I remember when I was really young, I had a dream. I must have been, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> I, I must have been around 10 years old. And I remember dreaming that I was on this bus and this bus was going up and down. I was shaking uh, down the street. Uh, it was bumpy. It was a really bumpy ride. And I was in this seat and I opened up my book and it was a science book. And I was on this bus school bus in my dream and I opened the science book up and immediately across the entire page the only thing that I could see was this one word and when I looked at what that one word it said earthquake and I remember I woke up being in complete shock thinking to myself oh my god I I, I just had a dream and I don't understand what that meant well it meant something big I woke up I couldn't go back to sleep and I ended up, oh gosh, I ended up trying to make myself, I think, some warm milk or something like that, hoping that was going to work. And guess what happened five minutes after I woke up? An earthquake. And the earthquake actually shook the house and it was like a 5.0 plus earthquake. Now, if you're not here in California, that's actually a pretty big earthquake. And that complete shock came to me being such a kid thinking, oh my God, I had a dream about an earthquake five minutes before it happened. There's no way on earth I would have known this unless I had that dream. Now, I specifically tell my own specific stories, and I will continue to do that throughout the show and share other people's dreams, because we all have experienced that type of phenomenon, whether it's been something that has actually come true, or it has been, uh, let's say, uh, a message that that brought us uh, a nightmare or even a message from someone that's passed away. We have experienced dreams, even if we don't actually know if we're conscious of them. And there's a science actually behind this. Research, researchers have explained that that there's some reason why people actually remember their dreams and why some people cannot. In the Scientific American magazine, there's an article, and the article is The Science Behind Dreaming, and it's written by Sander van der Lingen. And uh, it is, if you do your research and want to find this, it's actually on the web. July 26, 2011 is when it was written. And the article shares about a study that was based out of Italy. And the scientist, Christina Marzano, and her colleagues at the University of Rome explained that there's a signature pattern of brain waves explained that shows why people sometimes remember their dreams and why people don't. Apparently, the people that can remember their dreams have more of a lower frequency in the theta waves in their frontal brain lobes. And this team of people also was able to determine that they're, by using MRIs, 
there was techniques to witness that deep brain restructuring changed during the dream process. So your brain was by science, they found scientifically through MRIs verifying this, that the brain actually reshapes itself during the dreaming process. And then further, these, these researchers were able to find that when you have these vivid, bizarre, and emotionally intense dreams that are often emotional for many of us, they are linked to reshaping two parts of the brain specifically, the amygdala and the hippocamp- uh, hippocampus. Now, let me tell you what this is. The amygdala processes emotional reactions to memories. And that's actually uh, how we respond to fear, uh, how we respond to intense emotions that uh, shake us up. And the hippocampus reboots the brain storage. So if you can think of if you defragment your computer and put all your your files in one place so you free up space, that's literally what's happening. The researchers found that there's happening in our brain that this process of dreaming reboots the brain storage by converting information that we have from our short term memory to our long term memory. And, and that's really deep. And I am a mathematics professor. I help people understand mathematics and science. And I always tell my students, make sure you go to sleep the night before. It is determined through researchers that getting seven to eight hours of sleep per night allows this complete process to happen during this REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And during this process, this the, everything that boggles our brain during the day then gets shuffled and categorized in our subconscious mind and our long-term memory. So we are actually able to recall it and pull it up without difficulty and it leaves us room to be aware. Now, I, I you know me, I'm a scientist. I love finding out about how we work, why we work, and, and being okay with things that I can't explain. And of course, me, Olympia LaPointe, I'm curious, and I've always been that way since day one. And I started thinking about how does this relate to our TRIA brain? Now, in episode one, when we first started off this Answers and Least talk show, we talk about the TRIA brain, and that's the left, right, and the center part of the brain, which I call the faith brain. Together, all three sides create the TRIA brain. And I thought to myself, how does dreaming affect the TRIA brain? All right. Well, I figured it out. Are you ready? Okay, when we dream, there's a process that merges and reconnects the left brain and the right brain together. And that's through the faith sector, which I call the faith sector of the Tria brain. Dreams serve to convert the short-term memory to your long-term memory. And it taps into the unconscious life plan that you are envisioning for yourself. And it helps you release the fears associated with past and future events. But most importantly, dreams come from the faith sector of the brain. And this part of the brain is independent of time and space, per Einstein's theory. And these dreams serve you. The purpose of you dreaming is so you can be 100% aware while you're awake. The purpose of you dreaming is so you can be 100% aware while you are awake. It's for you to be able to see things that you cannot physically see. And that's only when you are aware. Now, <laughs> I, 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 love, uh, I love thinking and I love finding out about why. Why does this work? Why on earth are we dreaming? Now, I want to purposely note, the, we dream not only when we're asleep. The ideal time that we are designed to dream is when we are sleeping, um, preferably at nighttime, where we are completely at rest. But if we are not getting adequate rest, we actually dream outside of the sleep time. We dream 
in ways that take us away from our particular awareness. And there's three types of, of dreaming. Um, the, the first type is when you actually are, are dreaming and when you're asleep. And this is the, the dream state that we're used to. This is the dream state that most people uh, associate with. But then there's also the dreaming that happens when you're awake. And that's the daydreaming. And that's why it's specifically called that the daydreaming aspect. And that's when you're envisioning a particular uh, situation or a particular event. And then there is the third type, which is Distraction. Distraction. Now, there's three types of dreaming. And preferably, the dreaming that we have is when we have enough hours of sleep so we can actually harness all our particular dream state within one period of time, which is at night. But if for any odd reason we're not able to sleep long enough, that dream processing still has to happen. And so it starts happening during the day when you are awake and you come into daydream that's spacing out. But then that also translates to if you don't have the opportunity to daydream, you do not have the opportunity to sleep at night, then it comes out in the form of distraction where you completely are not aware of your situation around you and it causes, it can potentially cause you danger. Now, let me break this down for you a little bit more. If a woman is listening to her headphones and she's walking down the street at nighttime and she may be uh, uh, daydreaming uh, per se or, or distracted uh, by her particular uh, uh, audio device, she will be making herself vulnerable. And one of the first things that they teach in self-defense classes is if you're walking at nighttime, you have to be 100 percent aware. But for any odd reason, if someone is stressed and they haven't had the opportunity to fully rest, they are then placing themselves in that dangerous type of distraction oriented environment. If a carpenter who is dealing with things that he has to cut often is thinking about, let's say, a fight that he had with his wife earlier, he's not going to be as alert and aware of his surroundings. And that may that may be extremely dangerous for him if he's dealing with power tools that is that is just danger sign written all over the situation he can accident have accidents very easily if a child has a bad dream and they don't go back to sleep or they're very tired think about this if if that child is about to walk across the street it, will the child look both ways to be safe? The reason why we have dreams is for us to be completely alert while we are up and, and operating in this world. When we don't have that time to rest, when we don't have that time to dream, when we don't have that set time that we've established for being at complete rest and sleeping, that's when the safety issue comes up and we are not completely in the moment to take care of ourselves and protect ourselves. And most importantly, information gets by us. Now, there's actually one, two, three, four, four types of dreams that you can have. Five, five type of dreams that you can have. Five types of dreams that you have. And if you have a pen, you may want to write this down. This is really, really great for you to know so anytime if you have these type of dreams you'll be able to know what you are experiencing the first type of dream is what we call the prophecy dream and a perfect example is the story that i opened up with telling you about when i was on that school bus in a dream and opened up that book to see an earthquake and then a couple of minutes later five minutes later after I woke up there was an actual earthquake sometimes our dreams tell us information that is about to happen now you may wonder how this happens well this is the reason our faith sector of the tree of brain operates independent of time and space how it omits waves is that it does not depend on the t same type of awareness that we have when we're conscious. When we are conscious, we understand time and space in a certain way, and we are constricted by that. However, when you are dreaming, this accesses the faith 
sector of the brain. So you can see things that are going to happen. You have, can see things that has happened that you don't know about. And you can see things that are happening in the present that you don't know about. So if you have a dream that sometimes come true, and, and sometimes people see this as deja vu, you know, people say that deja vu is already seen. So if you've seen this happen before in a dream and it happens in real life, no, that's a natural part of your brain process. The second type of dream that exists is a guidance dream. It's a guidance dream. Um, I remember... I went through a a series of physical uh, therapy sessions to make sure that um, I could completely heal um, after uh, uh, minor injuries. And in the process of doing that, my body's energy was strictly towards trying to repair all of my muscles. But at that same time, my brain was was really, really, I, I truly believe it was healing at nighttime. And one of the questions that I had when I went to sleep was, Um, whether or not I should have these three people manage my particular career. Now, if you're not familiar with the entertainment career, it's very, very, very um, demanding. Um, There's things that you have to know. There's things, the contracts you have to be aware of. There are uh, different projects in which you have to create. There's different networking involved for you to actually uh, create something that will be of value. And then there's a process of distributing it so people know exactly Um, how they can be helped. And two people that I knew uh, very well uh, suggested that I meet this one uh, manager. And they suggested that I meet him because he was great with documentaries. And when I had met with the two of them, they introduced me to the third person who was great with creating documentaries. And he was also a seasoned manager in the entertainment industry. And uh, everything looked good on the surface. Uh, Everything seemed fine. And he he gave me the contract. I looked at it, but something didn't feel right, and I didn't know what it was. And I, I've learned throughout the years to listen to gut feelings. And so instead of saying yes, I just I just actually truthfully I decided to pray about it, and I just didn't know what to do. And I uh, asked the question. I'm like, should I go with these people or not? And I remember asking that question right before I went to sleep. And when I woke up, the answer came. See, while I was sleeping, something was shown to me. Uh, While I was sleeping, I had this uh, crazy dream that uh, everything I was saying to the two people that introduced me to the man couldn't be heard. And when I finally talked to the man that was interested in uh, producing my uh, life story on uh, PBS which, by the way, is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but the person that was interested in creating my a life story on PBS, uh, he didn't have the real information. He kept showing me something. He kept telling me that's what it was, but it wasn't that in real life. And I kept pointing to it. I'm like, that's not what that's not what you say it is. That's not what you say it is. And immediately I woke up. But that was the guidance that I needed. And that's what I asked for. I asked for what I should do. So what that dream was telling me was that whatever was said was not what was going to happen. And the original two people in the dream could not hear my concern. So going with this group would not be in my best interest. Well, I decided to follow that dream. And fortunately, I did, because had I followed it, I would have not been uh, the executive producer of this show, and I wouldn't have been able to create a whole string of books and platform based on the Answers Unleashed um, concept. So I'm very thankful that my dream showed me and gave me guidance. The next type of dream that exists are messages, 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 Um uh one of uh, now you I'm a scientist I um I love finding the reasons why science exists but I also recognize that science and the unexplained actually are one type of thing it's we just don't know the science behind it it may be unexplained right now but there's a reason 
behind all this. And for me personally, Olympia LaPointe, I don't know about anyone else, but me personally, I believe that God is the one that actually creates all the science that will explain how things work in the universe and how laws are always going to take effect and when they're not. But everyone's different, but that's just me. And and uh, there's messages. And I, I'm going to present this out to the audience. And there's going to be a couple of people who completely relate to this. And if this is you, I want you to know that it's specifically for you. Have you ever been in a situation where someone has passed away, but that person has come to you in a dream? This person, ha- Pat may have died in an accident or, or had died from natural causes, but left you and you wish to be able to talk to them and they came to you in the dream. Well, that's the type of dream that is a message. There are situations like that where there are messages given to people so they understand the situations in which they are in. So if you've ever had a dream like that, that's been a blessing because whatever message has been given to you regarding that has been a message that you were designed to hear. There's wishful dreams, dreams in which you wish to have. If you wish to have that husband, wish to have that girlfriend, if you wish to have that, sometimes you will have a dream where that will come forth in your particular situation And you will feel it, smell it, touch it. It will feel like it is the real thing until you wake up and then you're completely in awe that it wasn't actually happening. Well, the reason why that dream is given is for you to ignite the right side of your brain where you actually can experience it. Once you experience it in a dream setting, it becomes uh, consciously available to your to you in your brain if you have experienced a sensation in your subconscious and then when you wake up you remember it that allows you to be able to spot the same type of situation and feeling in your real life so you can be aware to move in a certain direction versus what not to do which is stay away from a situation that doesn't feel wishful the two type the last one that I'm going to share with you is a fear release. We have nightmares. Every single person has nightmares, whether or not you believe it or remember it, you do. And these nightmares happen is because your brain is releasing chemicals and breaking down the tar masses that are in your brain that's formed from trauma that you've experienced in the past. So when you have these nightmares, it's actually reshaping the deep levels of your brain to actually restructure itself so it fires optimally. And so nightmares are actually the the essential presence that allows us to release fears so we can understand uh, how to move forward without fear. All right. So if you have any one of these dreams, there's three tips, three, three things that I, I recommend that you do. And the first thing is sometimes you're given a dream specifically to pray over it or think about it, whether or not you are religious or whether or not you are scientific. The fact is that thoughts have a certain energy attached to them. Uh, it, inventors know this. That's why they invent. <laughs> so when you actually have a certain, uh, let's say if it's nightmare and it's something that is terrible, there's usually a chain of events that happen in the in the sequence, in the dream. And if you actually focus on one of those events not happening, that would actually shift the entire outcome of whatever is happening. Let's say if you're worried about it happening in real life, if you were to, to think about one of those chain of events not happening, that actually changes the way that you see it and perceive it and will experience it. So uh, sometimes praying that something does happen or something doesn't happen or focusing on that particular aspect is energy within itself that is beneficial to your brain reshaping. The second thing that I would recommend is that when you have this, this is an opportunity for you to change your perception. The reason why rapid eye movement happens in dreams is because your rapid eye movement is literally reshaping your 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 eye socket to the rest of your body. It's reshaping your complete 
nervous system within your skull that then connects with the rest of your body, your arms, your legs, your abdomen. And when that is completely balanced within your skull, you actually have stability when you literally walk. And we talked about that in our third episode with the Voila Method. So when you have this dream state, your eyes are rapidly moving. That is actually changing not only the physical molecular structure in your skull, but it's actually changing the way that light hits your eyes so you see things differently. It's changing your perception. And so in that case, think about the ways that you can change your thought towards a certain situation. What is the message that the dream is giving you? And the last one before we go is this. Dreams give you a chance to change your course of action. What were you going to do? What can you do instead? What is the dream telling you to do? What what was the dream specifically? Uh, my friend had a dream, and I'm going to leave you with this story. He had a dream, and in this dream, it, it was actually an uh, uh, ex-boyfriend that had this dream. He had this dream, and he was on the road, and there was a car accident in front of him. And he was completely shocked, and in the dream, he got into the accident. He didn't tell me, he didn't tell anyone else about what happened in the dream. But two days later, the dream happened in real life. We both were in the car. But here's the best thing. The dream told him what to do to avoid the accident. In real life, he swerved. And because he swerved, he did a different action that was in the dream. And we both were able to laugh about it at the end, knowing that we were completely safe. Sometimes your dreams tell you exactly what not to do. Listen to them. Well, I hope this helps with understanding what dreams do in your life. And I hope this helps with being able to decode dreams so you have a better understanding of why dreams happen and why they are happening specifically with your experience. And I look forward to sharing more science with you here on Answers Unleashed. For more shows, visit AnswersUnleashed.com. Thank you for tuning in to KPCRadio.com. I am your host, Olympia LaPointe. And I look forward to you coming back here. Call us at 888-88-ANSWERS. And until next time, this is Answers Unleashed. Reshaping your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you.